Earth's underground activities were deeply buried under a veneer of absolute respectability. Like communists and the mafia. But 100 years ago, 200 years ago, these things weren't considered frightening at all. Our conveniences of being able to connect to people through social networking, to find out people of like minds easily at the push of a button, were not at the ready for the founders, who had to rely upon these organizations to socially connect with like-minded people. But many secret societies also had a dark side, revealed only through whispers and rumors. Arthur Edward Waite, in his book entitled The Real History of the Rosicrucians, here's what he wrote, quote, Beneath the broad tide of human history, there flow the stealthy undercurrents of the secret societies, which frequently determine in the depths the changes that take place upon the surface. And no one used the power of the secret society to better political advantage than founding father Benjamin Franklin. Ben Franklin is America's founding overachiever. From the details of his electrical experiments with a kite and key, to his printing press, and to his publication of Poor Richard's Almanac, which was a colonial bestseller for more than two decades, he had an insatiable appetite for anything new, different, or bizarre. Benjamin Franklin is, is a rare figure in history. He did so much. There was so much to be done. What's not as well known is that Benjamin Franklin had the same huge appetite in everything he did. He was somebody who had a tremendous curiosity about life, as well as a uh, sexual appetite that would rival uh, anybody in American political life from Jack Kennedy to Bill Clinton. He belonged to dozens of 18th century clubs and societies, some benign, some with strange and even illegal practices. He was an organization man, Franklin was, because he was a networker. He knew that's how you did things. Benjamin Franklin's association with the Freemasons began with his initiation into St. John's Lodge of Philadelphia in 1731. In three years, his brother Masons elected him to the position and master in Pennsylvania. Starting in 1750, Franklin began traveling often to England and spent much of the next two decades living abroad. He participated in meetings and ceremonies at lodges in England, Scotland, and Ireland, and used his position as a Freemason to raise awareness of the issues confronting the colonies. In 1776, he was sent to France as ambassador of the United States. Shortly after his arrival, Franklin became master of the most celebrated and powerful lodge in Paris, the Lodge of the Nine Sisters. There he met many of France's most powerful political and military leaders and wasted no time using this secret association to win favor for the American fight for liberty against the British. And it's shortly after he becomes the Lodge that the success of his diplomatic mission starts to be seen. Now the interesting question to ask, was Franklin successful because the French hated the English? and would do anything to support their enemies. Was Franklin successful because he was a very persuasive and influential genius? Or was Franklin successful because he was a Freemason? And I think the answer is yes. By being a Freemason, he was able to bring in money. We needed, obviously, munitions. And, of course, this was a major uh, advantage of being able to go to countries who already created munitions when your own country didn't have enough. Benjamin Franklin also used another secret weapon to win friends and influence people, sex. He was somebody who could place himself among these French aristocrats and engage in their wild parties and their orgies and ingratiate himself to the powers that be there. 
Now, was he doing this purely out of the, uh, his allegiance to patriotism and the American cause? No. I mean, the guy was having a good time. But nonetheless, this is part of Ben Franklin's character, a man who's tremendously aggressive in terms of getting out there and enjoying life and also committed to these great ideals. Benjamin Franklin used the same method to make deals in England. This is how he met the eccentric and influential Sir Francis Dashwood, founder of the notorious Hellfire Club. The Hellfire Club, which was a secret society that was dedicated to engaging in orgies, some say devil worship. We don't really know what they were up to, uh, but it would be the kind of organization that would appeal to a guy like Ben Franklin. Did Franklin use a sordid sex club in the middle of the English countryside to help win the American Revolution? The fact is that the symbolism of secrecy has served the fraternity well. The bad news is that someone that doesn't like you can take your secrecy and say uh, anything they want about you. The great